Shalom Israel, Pastor Corey here with Straightway Kansas City. Got Brother Chris and uh, Brother Miguel here. Uh, had a pretty, pretty powerful weekend. I know I talked to some of you brothers today on the phone just about things that the Most High Yah has been doing. And you know, I just want to share this testimony with you because I'm going to also post up just you know a, a small snippet of the praise and worship that was going on this weekend, but we had a lot of guests in, had a lot of guests, yes, and uh, what, you think they enjoyed themselves? I know they did. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and I, you know, just talking with some, some of the brothers that was in, you could see, you know, even with, you know, one of the brothers who came, you know, he just, he's in a process of restoration, and, you know, I, I knew he grew up in the streets, he had a lot of that life that you experienced in the places where Israel is scattered in these neighborhoods, you know, in the inner city, this is where Israel is scattered. And, um, you know, he, he just cried out, man. I mean, he poured his heart out. And, you know, when I was talking to him, he said he still feel the presence of the most high God over him. He just, it's just like, it was unbelievable, man. And so, you know, what we are doing, we, we coming to you guys to just, you know, share the, the testimony of what took place, this weekend, and one thing about the move this week was that one, you know, it was it was all about how, you know, we allowed ourselves to one be overtaken by the presence of the Most High Yah. And you saying, well, how is that? Well, first of all, I don't know what you all do for praise and worship. I know a lot of you all uh, just, you know, in your congregations, you just sit and lit and, and, and listen. And you don't engage in praise and worship. And in praise and worship, there is, you know, a opportunity for the Most High to, you know, receive your praises as sacrifice. Like it says in, in, in Hebrews, that our praises are as sacrifice. It also says that Yah is enthroned upon the praises of Israel. And so when you praise and worship, man, when, we, when praise and worship started, maybe what did y'all feel doing praise and worship? You know, this this Sabbath. What'd you feel, Brother McGill? I felt the power, man. I felt the voices. I heard the voices mm -hmm. being lifted up, man. I felt the power moving. I felt that warmness that oh, only the most I can bring. That sensation. Right. That gets that blood, gets your face red. You know what I mean? <laughs> gets your ears hot. You know what I'm saying? It's just it overtakes you. It's overwhelming. Hallelujah. It's overwhelming, man. And, mm. You know, brother, that's what I felt, man. It's a joy. It's a joy to go before the feet of the Father, mm. you know, to give him everything that you got. Mm. Not having any reserves, any reserves, but just pouring out to him. You mm. know, it's almost like blacking out right. before the yes. most high. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. What about you, brother Chris? What did you feel this weekend, brother? Man, hallelujah. It was, it was a blessed time. You know, what I felt was the love of the Most High Yah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there, there's there's a love of this world that can't set you free. There's a love of this world that don't bring healing. There's a love of this world that equates to van vanity opposed to being set free in the truth that sets you free. Mm -hmm. And so when the presence of the Most High Yah, when his spirit, when his anointing rained down, you felt his love in mm -hmm. the room. And that same love that was in that room was the same love that is dwelling inside of his people, inside of these temples. Mm -hmm. And so what we were doing, we were just moving in obedience according to the spirit. And as that spirit started to move, healing was going forward. Yep. Healing was going forward doing the praise and worship where people really recognize it or not. Because hearts were being softened. If you came in there with questions or doubt, the love of Yah made you not question that no more because you've seen so much love around you. You've seen pastor going forward praying. You've seen the brethren praying. So if anyone came into the Shabbat service with a lack of love, with a lack, the Most High Yah was moving in full in this past Shabbat. Yes, sir. You know, and this is the thing about it is, you know, from... Camp to camp or congregation to congregation or 
people who say they're in the knowledge of the truth. And in fact, that's what our message was about. It was just a base message, but it was about people understanding that we are coming into the promise that was given to Israel. And we're not just saying it, we are experiencing it because I'm going to give you, you know, even on that video about, you know, the, the not, what is the knowledge of the truth? There was a couple that had come to fellowship with us and to be a part of what it is and, and what had drawn them. Number one, the true and living word had drawn them, but two, a testimony. See, that's what drew people to Yahshua is that he said, if I be lifted up above the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. And so that's what happened. He he had experienced something when I came to visit him at his house, he and his wife, his son, you know, is blind. And I asked him, I said, can, can I pray? Do you believe in healing? In the name of Jesus. And I'm saying this for a reason in the name of Jesus, because I'm going to express something to you, you know, because I, you know, there's people who just is sick at the name of Jesus. They only want you to use the Hebrew name. And I'm going to express something at the end of this video that I want you to truly get. Now, I lay hands on him. I know his name is Yahshua, which means Yah's salvation. Now, I know that. You know that? Yeah. We know that. Okay. But this is what I want you to get. I lay hands on him with no expectations. I didn't know what was going to happen. I met him a year ago when, you know, I was working at a temp job just, you know, over the winter. And from that point on, I started planting seeds. He didn't even know I was a pastor. I just started planting seeds. True, because I ain't trying to overtake nobody. I ain't trying to overpower nobody. The word is living. It's going to do exactly what it did. It's going to draw me in. If they have ears to hear. And so in that, I lay hands on him and come to find out this past Sabbath, their son wanted to thank me. The, the wife said, Pastor, my son wants to thank you. He said, I, I, Pastor, I want to thank you because when you lay hands on me, you know, I was able to see blue when I came home and mom said that was the first time ever he had ever said that he has ever done that now we can't make it up it's on the video they on there telling about their own testimony I'm just sharing it with you because the presence and the spirit is real even with me sitting right here right now I feel the consuming fire, the burning, consuming fire, which the Holy Spirit is supposed to come and consume. It's, the word say you shall be baptized with water and with fire. And we know that fire consumes. So if the word is a consuming fire, then the truth is down on the inside. And so how can you continue to live a lie if you have been filled with the Holy Spirit? You haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit. You are a liar. The word ain't in you. And so, and you don't understand, that's why you can go around and you are using the context of learning Hebrew, learning Hebrew words as the fulfillment of the word in you. And that ain't what it is. Now, I'm not saying that learning Hebrew is wrong. I'm not saying that that's not a part of restoration. But what is the first part of restoration is being filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the first part because in that then you can go forth doing the things in which the Messiah, the Hamashiach, had done. That's the first thing. Learning Hebrew and everything else is just a part of restoration at that point. And then even in that, you won't be puffed up in vain knowledge. You won't be pump, puffed up by what you think you know. And we've seen many instances where people try to come against us because they, they say about the name that we use. I'm going to give you a prime example. We was at Shofar Mountain. Powerful testimony. Many things have been done. Brother Chris' son had, was on that video. And I looked at how monotone he was. I looked at the 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 captivity that he was in, seeing that he couldn't fully partake in what went on that night in Shavuot. He felt it. He felt it, but yet he expressed that there is more that he knew he had to cry out for. About a week ago, he came to me and said, what did you mean when you said endure for a season? This is what I meant. I meant for him to know that 
his day of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit was going to come upon him, but he had to endure for a season, meaning that he had to tarry and continue to see the wonderful works going on around us. And that atmosphere yesterday was prime example of not missing your visitation. It was prime example of knowing what the Holy Spirit is about by what is getting ready to happen, what is going on on the inside, what is taking place around you. People were being knocked out on the floor. People were being overtaken by the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit that I know. That's the Holy Spirit I love. That's what's working on the inside of me, not no crap. Not just talking, not just saying words, not just going through motions. No, people was being filled. When his son was in that room, I told him, I said, look, we're not going to go through no fake process of speaking in tongues. We don't have, we don't know what's going to happen. Let's just leave it at that. But let's do desire that when the Holy Spirit comes, that we have some type of evidence that something that is spiritual happens to us. Tonight, right now, there's something happened that we, we, we gain the spirit of peace that we begin to, you know, be able to have, you know, uh, the gift of, you know, encouragement that we had the gift of faith, the gift of discernment, the gift of speaking in tongues, the gift of prophecy, something, let something come. We ain't going to just sit here and say that this is what we just want to speak in tongues. Now, we had Brother Mark in there, we had Brother Pete, and we said, look, bro, we agree, we're not going to fake nothing. Man, when that spirit smacked his son, oh my goodness, bam, I felt it, just like I was filled all over again. Man, I'm just saying, brother, I was up against that wall burning. Man, this thing was going crazy, I couldn't believe it, and his son couldn't stop Mm. When he came, when he he came upon his son, his son again, was he a different man? A different man. Different man. Different man. And you can see this in First Samuel when it happened to him. We said when the Spirit came upon him, he became another man. He began in the Tanakh. It said he began to speak in ecstasy. When I looked that up, when it talked about speaking in ecstasy, I want to say in the Holman Bible Dictionary when it talks about ecstasy. It said to be looked at as a madman. Then that just made me think about what they thought about them on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 when they said they thought that they were drunk seeing that it was being that hour of the day where nobody should be drunk. And so when I look even his son, I see how the spirit began to overtake him and he just praised and prayed. He couldn't stop praising. He couldn't stop praying. You knew that there was a wellspring of life Welling up in them, mm. springing forth. You knew it. See, and you all can't. You can't relate to this video because you ain't never experienced nothing like that. And so, therefore, you gonna sit and comment on this video. You are gonna be wicked. You are gonna doubt. You are gonna deny. And you ain't worth a damn dime. You might well turn the video off. See, let, let me let me put this to you like this. See, this one thing I know about y'all, and I don't want y'all to hear this. Y'all was the one that divided the tongues at the Tower of Babel. What do you want to do that? So then he knows how to reach the people where the tongues have been divided in the lands in which they were divided in. So he knew how to make sure that we heard of the wonderful works and to make sure that we would hear about the Ruach HaKodesh where we at and that it wasn't going to be because we had heard it in Hebrew that we was going to be able to be filled with the, that Ruach HaKodesh and feel it and have a result and become changed and become a different man. He knew that. See, and that's what people don't understand. So when you are trying to substitute being filled with the Holy Spirit with learning Hebrew, you ain't going to get it. You ain't got it. You overturn to a reprobate mind and you ain't who you think you are. See, Yah was smart enough. And that's why the day of Pentecost, the day of Shavuot, the day of reminding them when they received the oath was a very important day. And even in 1 Samuel, when... Samuel was getting ready to be, I mean, when Saul, when Saul, I keep saying Samuel because I, I just, I'd be excited, okay? When Saul got ready to be filled with the Spirit, Samuel reminded him that that was the feast, all right, of harvest, of wheat, all right? And so when we talk about the barley harvest versus the wheat harvest, the wheat harvest was around Shavuot, all right? And that's when that's the same time when the spirit fell 
on the emissaries or the apostles. And bam, they begin to speak in a holy language. They begin to speak in a language in which the, the spirit had given them utterance to utter the wonderful works of the Most High Yah. All right. And that's around the same time when Saul had had an experience like that. So and I'm not saying you can only get it around. I'm just saying that those were signs and evidence yeah, exactly. of these things coming to fruition. And so when I look at this and I look at how people have in their mind made up certain ways, they box in Yah, who is a spirit. He's a spirit. you going to tell Yah how to be a spirit who can do all things. Nothing is impossible. That's why you're on the doctrine you're on. That's why you ain't going to make it. That's why you're going to lose because you are overtaken by doctrine that is not sound and you're not open for the experience of the Holy Spirit to come upon you and you ain't going to be able to have what you need. And if you ain't sealed the Holy Spirit, you are not a son nor are you a daughter. And if you ain't a son or daughter according to the Spirit, then if you're only a, a designation of Israelites by being a seed of Jacob, then guess what? You're cast off. You're cast off. All right? And I just want to make sure we express that. Man, we had a wonderful time with the brothers. Man, I saw these brothers praising and Holy Spirit taking your Man, what, if you can say one thing to the camera before we close, Brother Chris, what overtook you about yesterday, bro? Actually, the power of the Most High is power. Knowledge didn't overtake me. It was a power that overtook me. <laughs> <laughs> from yesterday, and that's all it was, just that simple. It was the power of the Most High Yah, and that power is real. Hallelujah. What about you, brother, again? Hey, brother, like I said, it's the power, brother. The presence of Yah, brother, coming in. I'm grateful, brother, to have Hallelujah. that type of, for Yah to come and have that type of visitation <laughs> with his people. Hallelujah. And so many other people is missing out on that very thing. They want it so bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they're not going about it the right way. They're not going about it the right way, man. Y'all come and seize those who are his, those who are diligently seeking out his face. Mm -hmm. He comes and makes his presence known. That's and it. you can't deny it. Because no. if you do deny it, you already know what's behind it. You can't blaspheme it. If you do blaspheme it, you already know it. Mm -hmm. To hell with the Holy Spirit. Yep. Come on, man. Right. Oh, man. Come on. You know that clown. But how many people are saying that in their mind yep. and not at their mouth? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what I mean? Hallelujah. So, that's the power, brother. That's, that's it. Power, you know, I'm going to say this, man. You know, I had my cousin and his wife. They just, you know, they probably about four months in or, or so, you know, in the truth in terms of now really pressing forward. And she reached out to me about, you know, coming out and spending time with this. Man, they had such a good time, man. And the spirit overtook them so much. When I talked to my cousin last night, they trying to see about coming back this weekend. Now, it ain't got nothing to do with us. You know, and the thing about it is I had sent out some scriptures to the brothers this past week. And I believe that the Most High truly had orchestrated mm -hmm. that reading <laughs> concerning the spirit. Because it just, everything we read, we, we, we almost was in one with the spirit of what took place. I mean, it's so much more that, I mean, we're not going to overload you with a long, you know, hour, two hour video with sharing his testimony, but it, it just was, it was a, just a great time. I truly feel good. I, I can feel his presence operating on me. I feel the Holy Spirit dwelling in me and, you know, in my prayers this morning, you know, in, in tonight when I go pray, you know, I just want to feel him again. That's all I want. That's all I just want to feel Yah's presence. Because outside of that, we live in a lie. You know, because the enemy is the most cunning creature that is upon the face of the earth. And people play with that fact and don't understand that to the point where Israel has failed generation after generation after generation because of the spirits that Satan have operated in the earth to cause our flesh to lust after these things that is enmity against Yah. And so his presence, his spirit protects us from all ways of falsehood and leads us in the way of truth. You all be blessed out there. I'm Pastor Corey with Straightway Kansas City. We thank you all for watching, and if you are tuned in to the ministry, then continue hearing the word from those who bring the true word of truth. 
Bless you all. Shalom, shalom. Shalom.